and staying safe. Yes, sir. All right. Welcome to episode five of Small Room. I am here with the editor in chief of Cavs Connect, Daniel Toll. Hello. Daniel Toll, tell them what you're famous for. Uh, I didn't even know I was famous. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. I'm famous for taking everybody's pictures at the senior treat days. Um, I'm famous for my dance performance at the Mr. Coral Gable show. Got quite a bit of attention after that one. Um, I don't really know what else. Is there anything else I should know about? I mean, y- you are by you are VP. Oh well, yeah, that too. But um, but that's just a one year thing. It's not something I would say I'm famous for. But but thank you, I appreciate that. All right. So first things first, as VP, second in command in the class of 2020, what's the status of prom? Um, we haven't we're, – we're trying to keep all options open as best we can. Nothing has been decided 100%. It's looking like it's going to be pushed back if not canceled, hopefully not canceled, but – Like, honestly, nobody even knows. Like, uh, Danielle, our president, doesn't know. Ms. Suarez doesn't even know. Um, Honestly, we're just taking this day by day because in the past week, things have changed so much, and it's, like, changing drastically every day. So, worst comes to worst, it might get canceled. Hopefully, that's not the case. Um, I just really hope we get to to have our graduation on the scheduled date. Um, But prom, it seems like we're going to have to at least move it um, just because – even if we're back to school, everything's back to normal. Um, being in a hotel where there's tourists, uh, where there might be still um, some cases down in South Florida, it might be a bit of a dangerous uh, and risky situation. So we'll, we'll play it by ear. Because um, yesterday, I don't know if you heard, but we're now the number one most confirmed cases of corona in the world. We just surpassed Italy and we just surpassed China. We've had the virus for less time than they have. Um, So uh, between those two options of fully canceled or pushed back, what do you think is going to happen between those two? Um, I feel like prom is a little more expendable than graduation. Like I know for sure that – like the faculty at Gables doesn't want to get rid of the graduation. So that is going to happen regardless. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's going to happen regardless of what happens. Um, and that one, I just think will be pushed back prom. Like, I don't know. It's, I don't want to say something that might be taken the wrong way, uh, but it, it is a possibility that it does just get canceled altogether. Um, but one thing to be t- like to take into consideration is that the bulk of the cases are in uh, the Northeast and in the West, like the far West, like Washington and California, Florida, fortunately, given our population hasn't been so badly hit objectively. So hopefully we take precaution and things can get back to normal ASAP. Um, I know a lot of things have already like changed drastically. We've had the testing uh, for AP has become uh, digital. Uh, IAB testing is officially canceled. Uh, statewide assessments have been canceled. So like a lot of changes are going on right now. So it's um, like to think a month from now would kind of be out of, um, it's kind of too far fetched, but hopefully, hopefully things can get back to normal in a couple of weeks and we can still have our prom regardless of whether it's the April 25th deadline or uh, or not. Okay. And how has um, COVID-19 affected um, Cavs Connect? Um, Fortunately, since we are online, it hasn't really affected us too hard. We're still going to be working on publishing um, content for our school. Obviously, we can't do much school-related news because school isn't on at the moment. Uh, but we are going to work on the college acceptance spotlight grid. I don't know if you've seen it, uh, but we spotlighted a few seniors on it already. And that's that's kind of like the thing I want to give back to Gables when I graduate. Like, I want to have that grid filled with people, and I want to completely have it with, like, 50 seniors, 100 seniors, and have all of their stories be told, especially during this time when everything's really uncertain and people are really struggling. I think that'd be a great, like, reassuring thing to have for them. Um, So fortunately, because we are online, we are still going to be working from home. Uh, It's just the news that we publish isn't going to be as school-related because there's not really anything going on in school. So we might just do domestic and international stuff. I love you, dog. Now, before... (laughs) Give me just a second. Let me bring her in. Oh, for sure. For sure. All right. We back. All right. We back. Yeah. (laughs) Now, 
What made you want to join Cavs Connect sophomore, freshman, sophomore year? All right. So um, in my freshman year, I, was, I really wasn't too involved. Um, I was only like in one or two things. And I saw a lot of my friends joining um, IBHS, uh, Key Club, FBLA. They were joining publications left and right. And I kind of felt like I was missing out on a lot of things. And uh, being a part of Cavs Connect really uh, gave me that um, – gave me that like leverage to be able to immerse myself more within my school, um, to learn the ins and outs of the clubs and all the sports, all the activities and all that stuff. And that's really what I, what I wanted to join it for. Um, just to really get involved, get to know people that I didn't know beforehand, but then it became a really good experience for me. I've grown to really love journalism and media and producing content. Uh, and I look forward to majoring in journalism and media management in college. All right. So, um what college like what call like what college did you choose and why did you choose it based off of journalism so i applied to the university of miami as a journalism and media management double major and that's where i committed to a few weeks ago um i really want to go to um for their journalism program uh their communications department is phenomenal they have their own um like you, you, uh, the University of Miami has like 11 schools and colleges within the university, but the School of Communications has its own, it gets kind of like isolated from the other schools and it has its own career department. It has its own um, career counselors that are matched with you for uh, that school. So whereas like people studying uh, a pre-med or law, they're kind of all assigned to the same people. Anybody in the School of, in, in the school of Communications has their own um, career counseling and their, uh, their own career center that's specifically catered to that school, which I think is incredibly valuable. Um, not only that, they also have five, I think five or six different publications ranging from broadcast to creative writing. Um, they have a newspaper. Uh, they even do like weather forecasting too. And all of their studios are like super advanced. Um, the technology is like absolutely insane. Um, so that's definitely something I'm looking forward to. I want to try to join like as many publications as I can, cause I'm really excited for that. And as editor in chief of Cavs connect, what's it like running a publication sort of being the boss man? It's been a lot of fun. Um, my staff is actually, it consists primarily of freshmen. So, um, having this role of being able to influence the high school journey of all of these freshmen, especially given that I was like so uninvolved in my freshman year, I didn't really do anything. I was just kind of like go to school, go home, do my homework, go to sleep. Um, to see all these kids um, have the same experience that I had in my sophomore year and start it so much earlier and find even more success than I did at that stage. Um, that's been a really enriching experience for me. Um, and to lead the publication that I've been a part of for three years has just been amazing. We've accomplished so much um, at much faster rates than we have in other years. And also have, a, have to give a lot of credit to that to Alex Yagoda. If you're watching this, uh, appreciate you, man. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, definitely the best um, experience of my high school career. And I'm really glad that this is going to be one of the things I leave behind. All right. So did you ever think you were going to become editor-in-chief? Was that your ultimate goal when joining Cavs Connect, or did it just sort of come naturally to you? To be honest, I don't remember what made me want to apply for editor-in-chief the first time. What I do remember is that my first year, I was sports editor because uh, there was vacancy in the position. So fortunately, um, just the things worked out, and I did a good job with it. So I was able to get the role, and I was able to keep the role. Um, so in my sophomore year, I had like three elected, so I was able to have cast and just fine. In my junior year, I wanted to run for junior class board, but then given that I wouldn't have been able to do cast connect, uh, in my junior year because we only have one elective and IB. So what would have happened is, well, I talked to Ms. Suarez and I was like, okay, so I can either do, um, junior class treasure. I can run for junior class treasure, which is an interview. And I probably would have gotten it because, um, like I have a good relationship with her. So I could have run for junior class treasurer or I could have, well, and I could have been a copy editor for Cavs Connect, just not be in the class, or I could have just botched the whole, um, junior class, uh, role altogether and then do Cavs Connect sports editor again, so that I can apply to be editor in chief for my senior year. And they recommended that, but I kind of told them like right then in the moment, like, Oh, I want to be editor in chief my senior year. So that kind of like took them by surprise. Um, and like it kind of 
made them watch me with a close eye uh, throughout all of last year, and given that they knew that I was going to be applying for EIC in my senior year. Um, so they kind of prepped me along the way. But um, I don't really know exactly what made me want to do it. I just knew like, hey, look, if I'm sports editor, there's nowhere to go uh, but up if I'm doing well in my position. So, I mean, that was really the ultimate goal. As you know, Gable's live is dead, kaput, mm-hmm. completely gone <laughs> from the school. Yeah. And this year, I think it was Patty who picked up the role of the mantle of having a video thing. So yeah. now I now I know that G- Gable's live is dead, and now there's this thing called Cavs TV. What's your role in Cavs TV? I honestly have not um, done much with it other than – um, kind of just like picking who would be responsible enough to uphold the role of EIC for Cavs TV the following year. Um, like I said, this year has been a really big year for Cavs Connect. We've expanded our boundaries a lot uh, to cover uh, photography better, to do better with videography. Um, like you've seen with like the, all the TikTok Tuesdays that we do, um, all the video projects that we've had on the big uh, TVs by the Ralph Moore building. We've done a lot of different things that we haven't done in previous years. So um, given those projects, we've had a lot of people ex- ex- um, express their talents with photography and videography, uh, two of them being Natalie Abrahantes and Melanie Ozuna. And when the job was offered to Patty or Miss Passwaters to be the sponsor for Cavs TV, uh, there was like no question that those two, um, those two students would be the most qualified to uphold uh, the role of editor-in-chief of Cavs TV for the following year. And... Aside from that, they've been kind of doing it themselves. Um, They're not too well-versed in videography, but they're getting there. Um, Melanie and Natalie are definitely uh, picking it up as they go along, and they're getting really good at it. Um, And Miss Passwaters is going to be taking a videography course over the summer um, to make sure that she knows all the ins and outs of, like, the um, how to work the cameras, how to work a studio, um, how to project... um, the broadcast across the school, how to broadcast them. And they're going to pick it up as they go. Um, I, I, I don't expect next year to be, um, I don't expect the quality to be as good as that of like well-established publications here at Gibbles, like highlights and yearbook. Um, but I think it's going to be a good year. I think it's going to be the start of a really well-run program and it's going to be done by people that really care about it. And I think it's going to be great. All right. And as you know, you're not the only editor-in-chief. You are co-editors-in-chief, yes. you and Alexander Yagoda. Before yep. and after you guys, yep. it's the same situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's it like working with somebody else as editor-in-chief? Is it a good relationship with Yagoda? Like- yeah, yeah. We have, we have a really good relationship. And like, we were pretty close friends beforehand. So like last year when we were applying, um, like, we kind of knew it was going to be both of us. But there was always a possibility it could have been just one of us. So it was, it was like a little bit of a tension at times. But like at the end of the day, we both really hoped it would be us in the end, especially. Like he's been in it for four years. So he like loves it die hard. And I've been in it for three. So like it was no question for either of us who we wanted to be with. Um, but it's definitely been a good experience. It definitely uh, lessens the workload. Um, something I've expressed a lot to the Cavs Next staff is that um, – Like when they were joining in the publication, this is not a publication like your book or highlights where you have like set deadlines to either produce your book or to produce um, a certain number of spreads or to produce your magazine. We produce content weekly. So we have to really be on top of our stuff all the time. We can't um, just kind of slow things down every couple of weeks and pick it up uh, because the deadline's approaching. We have to be consistently on top of our stuff as much as we can. So to be able to have um, a co-editor-in-chief that can share that responsibility with me half of um, to share half of the workload is an amazing burden that's off of my shoulders and what's it like competing because as you mentioned you, you know you guys have to be more on top of your stuff so how does that like translate into competitions like FSPA well FSPA is not happening this year so I can't really answer that one <laughs> uh, that one um, that was actually the field trip I was looking forward to the most this year uh, just because I thought it was going to be the first time Cass and I got to um, all Florida status in like the past five years uh, and the first time or the first couple of times that we won um, it must have been like 2014 or 15 like it's been a while I they have the awards listed from as late as 2017 sorry yeah as late as 2017 and on 
Um, and since then, we haven't won off Florida. So I thought this was going to be like the first chance since then that we would have had a chance to get that award. And I mean, we still might get it, but we won't get it at the convention, which is all the fun. Um, but in terms of competition, um, since FSP is ha not happening, competition within the staff, what we've done for that is we've had like a lot of um, staff awards. Like I, I created this top story crown sort of thing that we did for much of the first and second quarters. Um, where it was basically the senior crown that I took to school the first uh, day of senior year. And I wrote like Cavs Connect top story on it and it said like top story crown. And then what we would do is we would give the top story crown um, every week to the top, to the writer that wrote the top story of that week. And then we would tally them up and then those stories would be the ones that we submitted to FSPA, which we did end up doing that. It was just, now we're not attending the conference. We're just getting all the awards digitally. Um, so that's a way that we've had competition within the staff. Um, we definitely had some competition for FSPA Fall, which was held at um, Florida International University for the J-Day that they hold every year. And we had, I think, it must have been like six submissions. And no, it was, I think, yeah, it was like, I think it was like six submissions and we had four honorable mentions and all of them were freshmen. So that was like one of the first articles that they had ever released. And um, a lot of them won awards for it. So I was really proud about that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what it's been. Uh, we also attended NSPA, but we didn't really compete there. Um, the trip was also kind of planned last minute. Um, we weren't really sure if we were going to go or not. Fortunately, we did, but we registered too late to, uh, to compete in anything. And we were going to compete in FSPA um, in the on-the-spot contest that they have at the convention. But because it's canceled, we can't do those anymore. But the good thing is that now they're being held um, digitally. They're going to be run through an online platform. Um, I don't know what it is yet. I haven't announced it. But given that we're online, that's a pretty good advantage. All right. And I'm going to ask this question. I've asked it before, and I'm going to keep on asking it to every Mr. Coral Gables contestant who does the impossible. <laughs> how do you make top 10? And how do you not only um, make top 10, but make top five? All right. Well, do you want me to tell you, tell you from a, per like, as a person telling another person, like, oh, you should do Mr. Cole Gables is how you get top 10? Yes. All right. So, um, so the first thing you got to do, you got to go to every single practice. And all those practices are super fun. Like, you cannot miss a single one. Wait, just to break the conversation, were you going to do the Gablet review? Oh, hell Yeah. I mean, oh, that might be canceled okay. because of Corona. Yeah, I don't know if that's still going to happen. Oh, but Chris asked me to be his sweetheart. Did you know that? Wait, really? Yeah, Chris got said it's asked me to be his sweetheart. Nice. Dude, for real. It was going to be real, but I don't know if that's going to happen anymore. Um, I mean, hopefully it does. But, uh, yeah, definitely you have to go to all the practices. You have to let yourself be known, show character, um, talk to the other guys. Definitely, like, have your presence be felt, like, even the juniors that were there, they still, like, bonded with us a lot. Like, Gabe won fan favorite, which was, like, absolutely crazy. Um, and Dress completely stole the show, and he was one of, like, our favorite guys at practice. Um, so, yeah, definitely show a lot of heart. Go to every practice. Uh, be respectful to Ms. Diaz and the Gabe Lads. They're really doing a lot of work to try to make the show happen, and it turns out great every year. Um, so, yeah, so that's how you make the top ten. And you definitely have to learn the dances, practice them, and make sure you don't make a lot of mistakes. Uh, to make top five, it's all in the talent. Um, you definitely have to be creative and original with it. Um, my talent, it was just a bunch of like dance compilations that I got from Just Dance. Uh, and I just put a bunch of different songs together and it turned out to be really good. Uh, I think what really sold it to the crowd was the music selection because I like spice it up completely. I had some salsa in there. I had some country music. I had pop. Then I ended it with Disney Channel. Like it was, it was all over the place, but I got to make it work somehow. I, enga I engaged the crowd and it was, it was a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of fun. All right. And aside from Cavs Connect, I know you're an editor, for, not an editor, but like a contributor to like another website for baseball. Yes. 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 Called? Uh, it's called Fish Tracks. It's a, it's a blog under this like large um, sports blogging company called Sports Blog Nation. And um, that company has like sub blogs for every sports league in the world. And then those under those sub blogs, it's 
they have one for every sports team in that league. So they have a sub blog um, for the MLB or the NBA. Then they also have one for the Marlins, the Yankees, the Heat. Like they have it for every team you can possibly imagine. So it's not like it wasn't a huge thing. It was kind of like a small time thing I was doing um, in the summer just to get some experience, just to meet some new people. A lot of them, um, some of them went to UM, a few went to UF. So I got to make some good connections. Um, and I got to report games like from the press box, which gave me the opportunity to meet some um, some broadcasters that I have been watching my entire life, which was a really cool experience. Um, so yeah, so I just wrote a lot of like analysis pieces, coverage pieces, and I'm looking forward to doing it again. I'll, I'm going to reach out to my managing editor soon uh, once the season starts because it's been postponed. It was actually supposed to start yesterday. Um, so once the season starts up again, I'll reach out to him again and uh, see if I can get started with uh, covering the Marlins. All right. And at your time at Gables, how do you say you've, um, you've, how do you think you've grown your reputation? Um, I think my reputation at Gables is definitely one, um, like I've, I've put a lot of efforts into making myself be like a person of integrity, a person of honor, um, a person of respect. Like I've tried to make sure that I'm friends with everybody that, um, that if ever, if anybody has a concern about anything that like I can be able to help them, whether, whether it's with Castanet senior board, um, through the special Olympics chapter that I started, I always try to make sure that people get the help that they, that they're looking for. Um, I feel like Gables is a really big, big place and it can be really intimidating for a lot of people, especially freshmen. So throughout these four years, I've taken it upon myself to, um, not only grow from my own experiences, but grow from helping others experience high school themselves. And definitely I felt that the most this year with Kastanek, a lot of these freshmen, um, they struggled in the beginning. Uh, they kind of had difficulty finding their way. Um, and just to be able to know that like, I can share my experiences related to them and then help them grow as a result of it has been really rewarding for me. All right. And not only your experience with Kastanek, but how has your experience as being on the class board and being vice president, how has that been? Being on the class board has been a lot of fun. Uh, it's been something that I actually have wanted to do since my sophomore year. Actually, no, my freshman year. I wanted, in middle school, I was um, part of the Carver Student Council. And in my freshman year, I was like, ah, student council in, in high school, that's boring. It's too much work. And then I saw a lot of my friends doing it. I was like, wait, I got to get, I got to get into this too. But then the freshman elections are held like in the middle of the year and the sophomore elections are held towards the end of freshman year. So I wanted to do sophomore board, but then I couldn't do sophomore board because the, the elections had already happened. So then I had to wait a full year to do it again. And then came junior board, but then I only had one elective. So it was cast and actors or junior board. So I forgot about junior board and went uh, for senior board when I had the elective space. And fortunately, I was elected in. Um, I was elected as VP, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, definitely organizing all of the events uh, this year has had, um, like the homecoming, um, all the treat days, which have been really like eventful and like a lot of decorations. Uh, even the senior brunch, despite all the controversy, has been fun to plan. Um, and we had a really great uh, idea in mind for prom, which I don't know if I should disclose, but you can probably guess it. Um, but it was just going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I was auditioning for the graduation speech. Like there was just so many things I was looking forward to being a part of this board. And I, uh, or unfortunately, some of it has to be cut short, but it's definitely been a lot of fun. I feel like I've gotten a lot closer with the class. All right. Um, for those in the audience who don't know what he's talking about when he refers to the senior brunch controversy, do you mind if I explain or do you want to take yeah, it? Yeah, sure. No, I'll, I'll let you go. All right. Basically, before this year, instead of doing a senior brunch every single year beforehand, we would go to the outside of our field at Gables and we would have a senior picnic. And there would be like a few rides, like a, like a few things there. But the problem was like, like it would cost a lot of money to to pick up trash afterwards and kids didn't want to pick up teachers didn't want to pick up so the class board had to make a decision as to what was most economic and they felt that the most economic thing to do was to have a senior brunch instead because because it would 
because the picking up would be prepared by the hotel staff. Is that correct? Yeah. And it wasn't entirely that. It was a combination of a lot of things. Um, just historically, our, like the class of 2020 in comparison to the class ahead of us, um, th that being the class of 2019 and the class of 2021, um, just in comparison, we haven't been the best fundraising class. So a lot of the money that you don't use like over a year, it carries over. It's like, like, kind of like the carryover cell phone plans with data. Uh, it kind of carries on over to the next year. So if we had any money left over from the freshman year treat days, we would move that over to sophomore year. And then over time, that money accumulates. But when it's in thousands of dollars, you get tens of thousands of dollars over time. Um, so then eventually, um, well, this year, we had a record, at least for our standards, we had a record uh, selling year. We, sell, we sold the most amount of um, senior gear, well, the most amount of class gear that we did in comparison to our junior, sophomore, and freshman years. Um, we sold a lot of cakes. Uh, we had, I think, like 60% of our class sold um, just for the first treat day. And then over time, I, like as the grad bash, as grad bash came closer, as um, the senior brunch came closer, more people started giving in donations to be able to attend these events. Um, but like that first mark of 60% was like very, very high uh, in comparison to previous years. So then it was a combination of the fact that historically we haven't had that much money um, under our class of 2020 account. Um, but it was also the fact that in previous years, a lot of people at the senior picnic um, didn't have a lot of fun. Um, it definitely looks like a lot of fun, but when only like 200 people go out of 800 seniors and it costs like a lot of money to get these DJs, to get the, um, uh, to get the, the caterers set up and to get all the entertainment, all the floats, all the water slides, all the, um, all the speakers and stuff, all that stuff costs a lot of money. And to have done that, given the fact that we didn't have a lot of money to begin with and that not a lot of people go to these events, especially since like last year, um, like the senior picnic, I thought I actually worked it. I thought it was super fun. Like there were sport, like there were like volleyball nets, football fields, um, soccer fields. It was a lot of fun. But then they had tents set up and like 200 people were sitting down out of maybe like 250 that went. So um, a lot of people were sitting down wasting time and then all the faculty was like, come on, like we spent a lot of money, a lot of time planning this and you guys were all just sitting down under a tent getting shade. So the faculty didn't really like that too much and I kind of understand why. And I also understand why a lot of seniors were upset that we weren't getting a brunch. Um, but I mean, sorry, that we weren't getting a picnic, but um, I know for sure that brunch was gonna be a lot of fun. Um, it was, we were gonna have a, a year, an end of year slideshow that was gonna be done by Casanac. I haven't, the reason I've been taking pictures the whole year is to create that slideshow. I was gonna create a, an end of year Kahoot that like everybody at that brunch was gonna be on at the same time. And it was gonna be like just a bunch of memeable questions. Like what is, um, like one of my questions was like, what is a teacher's nickname at Gables? The answer was gonna be Scotty P. Like it was gonna be a bunch of different like memeable 2020 questions um, that everybody would have understood. And I think like the winner was gonna get some prize or something like it was gonna be fun. We were, we were gonna make our way around it. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's really what ended up happening, um, why it ended up happening. But unfortunately, now we're not getting either one. So what can you do? All right. I I, I just find it kind of funny that like everyone was like, like kind of like mad, but like the irony is like, it, like even if you, even if people had won the battle of, um, of getting senior picnic, it still would have been canceled anyway, because we don't yeah. return to school until April 15th. And it would have been on April 4th when we would have still been mandated yeah, by the I governor. Yeah, I mean, they're saying... Uh, Superintendent Carvalho said that we're gonna they're gonna reevaluate the situation on the 15th. So if if you look at the calendar, the 15th is a, is a Wednesday. So it'd be so weird to go back on a Wednesday. Um, but they're gonna like check to see like how things are going around the around the county to see when we should go back because like they canceled IV testing, statewide tests, all that stuff. Like I don't know, man. I don't know what's gonna happen, but. Like, I, I wouldn't be so sure if we get head back the 15th. And prom was the 25th, so that's the it's follow. It's too close like, to home. Yeah, like, it's not that Sunday, but the following Sunday would have been prom. So, I like, most likely prom is going to be moved if it's still going to be held. But right. I have no idea if that's going to happen. Like, we haven't really talked about it yet. I mean, the, I, I heard that the peak of the, of the virus, COVID-19, 
is like mm-hmm. 40 days away. So that means for like the next 40 days, it's only going to go up and up. And yeah. it, it's not projected to go down until like 40 days from now. And, and my question to you is, um, do you think that because there was that whole controversy of senior brunch, like mm-hmm. the whole controversy of it being a brunch instead of a picnic, do you think that was part of the reason why, why like, activities found it more expendable to um to cancel senior brunch as opposed to the conversation that you guys are having with prom which is should we cancel it altogether or should we push it back until this thing gets better um honestly i'm not too sure um the brunch was definitely something like first it was there was definitely a lot of controversy with it a lot of people wanted a picnic um a lot not too many wanted a brunch and i know a lot of people were upset to hear about the brunch um but like when we when we were doing the um, the brunch tickets like selling the brunch tickets we needed i think 200 to uh like to have the event continue and we reached like 170 ish around there so then like we were like okay you know what whatever we're still gonna have it um like we already made a reservation at the hotel we already bought the decorations like we might as well um and i think like there were still some people that were trying to buy tickets after the fact. It's just they needed to make donations. So honestly, we probably probably would have reached the 200. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think if we're going to have, like, given that everything's getting canceled, it, if I don't, I, I don't think it was just a, an event that was so important that we needed to reschedule, especially, like, given the uncertainty of this whole situation. Um, the thing with prom is that prom is an event that everybody's looking forward to. And personally, I think if we're going to like hold on to our money and use it where it counts, prom is where you want to use it. If not prom, then graduation, um, which, I mean, I don't know if it'll take place during the summer. I don't know if it'll take place on the same date, but um, I definitely senior bunch is far more expendable than um, our prom. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to have our prom I'm not too sure on that one, but, um, but yeah, like if it just economically just makes a lot more sense to get rid of, um, senior brunch, especially since it wasn't too hyped up as much as it wasn't as hyped up as, uh, we would have liked. Uh, it's definitely better to have our prom than, um, and to save our money for prom and graduation than to reschedule our senior brunch. All right. And this has been a meme that's been going around, but basically people are suggesting we have prom either through Zoom, like how we're talking right now, or through Club Penguin. What would it, would that be a possibility? Um, it would be pretty funny. I mean, if 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 it doesn't happen, we should definitely try to do it on the side. You know, like like just get a cumulative effort and try to have it on Club Penguin. I think that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> are Club Penguin servers back up? I heard weren't they down? No, like they got they down for a few years and now they're back up. Uh, well, what happened is that the that the Club Penguin servers got like shut down by Disney officially, but there have been some side servers that oh, have been coming okay. up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah right. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> now, before prom and senior brunch, back to a time when Corona wasn't just canceling all of our activities or at least putting them on the lifeline, there mm-hmm. was. Homecoming, the the ticket sales were a tremendous success. Yeah, I talked sure. to Sun about it. You guys sold six hundred tickets. Now I heard that although although prom is handled by the student count, not prom homecoming, homecoming yeah. is handled by the student council, and and, and so is prom. Mm-hmm. You were involved in the um in the finding of the location at the UM ballroom. Yes. yes. So can you like Alexander Sutton? If you're watching this, I'm very upset with you because, first of all, the plan to do it at UM was my idea. All right, Alex? It was my idea, and you did not credit me, and you said you would from now on. So there's that. Um, but, yeah, the, the, the idea actually came up because my cousin, uh, who's like 24 now, uh, she actually had her wedding at UM, which is kind of ironic because neither her or her husband went to UM, uh, but they love UM with all their hearts. Um, so they actually wanted to have their wedding, um, the reception at UM. And it was actually like so much fun. Like it was a blast. Like the modern feel that was there, it was amazing. Like it was nice. Like, I mean, it's a wedding, so it's obviously going to be nicer than a high school homecoming. But like 
do you know that little hallway right outside the ballrooms where they have yeah. the couches that go around to the lake? Um, right there, they had like a bunch of servers and they were serving like appetizers before the reception started. And like all the families like met up and they started talking and like talking about the, the bride and the groom. And um, there was like a live jazz band outside. Like it was like really over the top. Like it was a lot of fun. And then the party itself was a blast. So, um, so when it came down to pick a location for homecoming, I was like, we don't want to have it at school. If we're going to have it anywhere, that's where we should want to do it. And I'm sure like Gables and UM has a great connection. So I'm sure they'd want to do it. And fortunately we were able to get it. We got the first two ballrooms, uh, which would have fit 400 people. And then we sold so many tickets by the end of the first day that we had to buy the second one. And, and yeah, it just turned out great. But Alexander Sutton failed to mention that the idea was mine and it was not his. So hopefully he sees that. And I saw the first podcast with him and I know he, he mentioned everybody in the council and not me. So there's a little, a little jab at Mr. President. Ooh. Ooh. Well, <laughs> well I think we've covered he, he everything. Bro. He just celebrated his 18th birthday yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was the 18th birthday. Yeah. So sorry. Happy birthday, son. Sorry, it's Happy in the middle of a son. pandemic. Happy birthday, <laughs> yeah. son. Wait, can I ask you a question? Yeah, go right ahead. How did this start? How did the small room start? Oh, basically what I did was... I mean, it started all the way back in August with Richard Smithies. Uh -huh. um, and, like, I was like, oh, let me start a podcast and interview. But after I interviewed Richard Smithies, it, it, like, I was kind of like, and it kind of stopped and school had started. But, like, what made me bring it back was this quarantine. Yeah. Well, yeah. That'll do. Yeah. But the reason why it's named Small Room is because my room is very, very small. It's incapable <laughs> of having two people. Like, it's incapable of a person coming over to sit down and actually interview. Uh-huh. So I figured small room from yeah. one small room to, to, another. to, to another small room. <laughs> it's been Birdie. great to have you, Daniel. Um, great, to, great to be here. As as you know, all great things must end. You've been a wonderful guest yeah. for the fifth episode of You've Small Room. <laughs> Thanks for the invite. Adios, no man. Adios. Bye. If you really like this episode, please subscribe or whatever it is you do on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast to add me and make sure that you're available and you can see when future content is uploaded. Thank you. Bye.